tons of rain again here in Texas. We've seen totals as high as four inches through the downtown Houston area and five inches in the Tyler, Texas area. Thanks for joining the Meteorology Lab channel again. I'm Tim Vasquez, and for the next 20 minutes, we'll be looking at weather around the country. The big story today, big winter system in the Great Basin area, area here in Oregon. Uh, east of the Cascades, we've had about 250 miles of Interstate 84 closed through this area out towards Pendleton and uh, western Idaho. And uh, we had ice out here earlier today, and a lot of that has moved into the actual Great Basin area. Temperatures have come up, though. I took a look at soundings, and the uh, temperatures in the columns through here have been mostly above freezing. De uh, Boise, though, still a little bit cold right now. Temperatures uh, are below normal in that part of the country. We do have quite a bit of warm air up in Canada and in the southeast U.S. So things have been moderating quite a bit out east of the Rockies. But uh, we're opening up the uh, Pacific. Got some uh, systems coming inland. And we'll be seeing those over the next uh, few weeks. Oh yeah, let's... Uh, I don't think I got the temperatures for today, the max temperatures, but... They were pretty similar to yesterday, just lots of uh, 40s and 50s in the south, and uh, there we can see the Pacific systems coming inland right there. Lots of rain in California, especially around the Sacramento area, up uh, towards the uh, Marysville area, also west of Oakland and San Francisco, some shower activity there. We've got the front starting to come inland right here, and right now we've got a lot of... Uh, I wouldn't say tropical air, but uh, some very moist air coming up from the south. And here's another look at it on the 500 millibar chart. This is up at 18,000 feet. And here you can really see the jet stream energy coming off the Pacific. Jet stream focused kind of like this. And the main trough well off the uh, coast here. And this whole area here is a very potent area of upward motion. So we're supporting the storm track right in this area and we've got our cold front pretty much like that. Pretty quiet elsewhere in the rest of the country except for this cutoff low centered just north of Albuquerque around the Alamosa area and south of that we've got the southern stream jet in Texas and the uh, southeast U.S. Here's the uh, thickness and isobar chart. You can see overall thermally very homogeneous pattern across the U.S. except for right here in the south where we've got a few thickness lines here. So that's supporting a weak front from about Mississippi down to Houston and down to the Texas coast. So we're going to be looking for that on the thickness analysis, or on the uh, surface analysis. Then we've got another one in North Carolina right here. Weak cold front moving south along the mid-Atlantic coast. And here comes the California system right there. Cold front coming inland at this hour. And where would we put the warm front? Maybe something like that. Uh, up, way up north towards uh, Eureka north of Elko, and as you imagine, just north of that warm front, that's where we've, we've got the isentropic lift focusing. So that's helping to create these uh, showers here in Oregon. But with warm air advection and air mass modification, we see temperatures come up. And so at the hour in that region, lots of above freezing temperatures. We have uh, do have 32 here. I think that's Burns and 23 here, but most of the other stations here are just above freezing. So we're going to put the warm front, maybe something like that. Cold front uh, just coming on shore about this hour. And then the main low is way up here west of Astoria. So that's the big story right now, but as that system comes inland, it will start uh, pulling in some cold air, and we will see uh, 
some wintry weather in this region right here over the next couple of days, especially down into the Four Corners area towards the weekend. I'll have that on the uh, GFS panels here very shortly. Elsewhere around the U.S., Texas uh, pretty quiet here. See a little bit of divergence there. So this is kind of under the influence of high pressure centered uh, around Memphis. And we've got uh, lee side troughing set up in Colorado in the Texas Panhandle. So trough roughly like that and southerly flow out ahead of it here. But along the Texas coast, this is under the influence of that frontal system. And we can see that as an air mass contrast between Do Beaumont and San, uh, not San Francisco, San Antonio. They've got 56 air with a northwest wind, cost contrasting very sharply with 69 dew point there at Beaumont, 71 degree temperature, and similar conditions out near Lafayette. So cold front, just like that, starting to come through Houston here and coming through Port Lavaca, Port Aransas, and Corpus Christi. See elsewhere around the country, pretty quiet, just southerly winds in the, in the North Plains, very uh, cool conditions there. But as you go further north, you get into the more unseasonably mild air, lots of 30s up in this area, and we talked about that yesterday. Southeast U.S., very quiet there too. In the Northeast U.S., cloudy conditions. This is a warm air advection pattern that tends to be cloudy if you have uh, some fairly decent humidity. Probably got a little bit of a warm front uh, down to the south somewhere. So probably be just a little bit of isentropic lift working over this area here. Okay, let me uh, go through the charts here real quick and uh, see where we're at. Yeah, I'll show you the, the uh, polar front real quick. You can see the main polar front well up to the north in the Northwest Territories. So here's the main warm front from uh, Saskatchewan down to Western Ontario. North of that, lots of thickness lines. And then the main core, the polar air, up in the Canadian High Arctic in Alaska. Okay, let me close these charts. I've got quite a bit of windows open here. And maybe I can show you those high temperatures real quick. The, that just came in about 30 minutes ago. And there it is. Uh, basically 40s and 50s through the south. And then out in uh, California there. Pretty much the same. Lots of 40s and 50s. Most of the nation though, temperatures about freezing. So there you go. Okay, let me uh, just check in with chat and uh, see we got Jeff and uh, Fred. Fred is here, hopefully a little bit warmer up there. There's Alexi in uh, Texas, Ron in South California. Sue checking in from Indiana. There's Brian and uh, Austin. Fred says he got up to 33 degrees there in uh, eastern North Dakota there. And there's a record high in, I uh, forgot where Jeff is, but uh, he's checking in with 80 degrees there for a high today. So let me uh, show you the air mass here. I'll show you Fort Worth. We've just had a lot of rain come through earlier today. And the soundings uh, look pretty much like what you would see behind a frontal boundary. So this has the characteristics of a frontal inversion right there. So temperatures around 50 near the surface and coming up to the mid, the low to mid 50s aloft, about 4,000 feet above the ground. Then above that, lots of dry air, and we pick up a little bit of cirrus here at about 25,000 feet. Very strong southwesterly flow aloft, got 120 knots there up at about 25,000 feet, but the winds are kind of light and variable near the surface.
at Amarillo, closer to that lee side trough there. Sounding looks a lot different. Kind of a warm profile starting out uh, near 20 degrees Celsius and uh, pretty much moist adiabatic all the way up. Kind of a low tropopause there at about 28,000 feet. And you can see conditions are pretty dry. Then we'll pick uh, one more sounding here. Maybe we'll take a look, look at uh, maybe Bismarck. We'll go up north. Haven't looked at uh, North Dakota much, but showing a very strong inversion right here. So we can see temperatures are around 54 degrees, up at about 925 millibars. And for some reason, we have this very strong inversion. Looks kind of like, resembles a frontal inversion. And I'm not quite sure why that hasn't busted today with heating. That's kind of a mystery there. We should have seen uh, this lower part come up pretty strongly and maybe get 40s for highs up there. So is there an exp explanation for that? I'm not... I'm not really sure. I guess we just haven't had enough solar insulation working on that area. But 27 degrees right there at Bismarck right now. And, wow, 39 at Minot. Okay, let's see what else we got. There goes the rain moving on off to the east. We had it over the Dallas and Austin area earlier this morning. And that's moved off to the east right there. So I guess we're pretty much ready to head into the uh, forecast maps, and let me get that set up here. And of course we'll put a little bit of focus on California there, since we have a lot going on. And we know that the front is starting to work on shore. And you can see those three thickness lines right there, signifying the frontal boundary. So we're going to go with something like that for the placement. So going forward uh, to tomorrow morning, we see a lot of this rain coming on shore in California. And then the uh, thickness lines kind of push southward, so it looks like maybe our front gets carried down into the Las Vegas and Mojave Desert Valley area. Lots of uh, snow shower and rain shower activity behind that. Okay. So for our forecast Thursday, are we already up to Wednesday? Yeah, I guess we are. Okay, Thursday tomorrow. For webcast, uh, let's see here. Things warming up in Texas, and here we've got the Leaside Trough in Colorado forming kind of like a closed low near Amarillo. And south of that, westerly winds. So a little bit of downslope, and we should see things warm up in Texas. Probably see a lot of 60s tomorrow. But we have the uh, main system approaching out of California. And I would probably just go with that for a placement, maybe. It's kind of distorted by the um, mountain ranges. And we can see the 540 line starting to come down here. So this is a pool of cold air, and we've probably got an upper-level trough over that area. And this is probably a good time to take a look at the 500 millibar chart. So this evening, the chart at 500 millibars is looking like this. Here's the uh, cold pool over Colorado. I guess we do got a little bit of cold air near that uh, lee side trough. Here's the main trough coming into the California coast. And then tomorrow, we're going to see it uh, looking like this. So here's the troughing associated with that code pool over the Great Basin area. And looks like the low hewers can move into Kansas tomorrow. There's a trough right there. Okay, so. I think I've lost one of my maps here. Where's I'm trying to find my uh, GFS chart. 
had it uh, in the sequence and it appears to have uh, vanished. Yeah, I think I dragged it off of that uh, set of bookmarks. Okay, here we go. So back to the GFS. Here's our Pacific system coming through the Rockies. And the next big change we're going to see here is with the next system coming on shore. And it looks like that comes through California on Friday. So you see that right here. Lots of uh, pressure gradient through here. Lots of rain once again for California. And it looks like uh, LA getting some of this on a Friday afternoon. And that'll come across the mountains. In fact, here's the uh, Barra Clinic system right there. This is on Saturday morning, and that will get to Texas on Saturday. So that's uh, the system right there. And that'll move off into the southeast U.S., and it looks like we have another system coming in on Sunday. So you can see we're kind of stacked up one after the other. New front coming on shore like that. For Monday, that moves inland. We've got a good 993 millibar low over Idaho. And uh, front's looking like that on Monday. And then we see that coming to Texas around Tuesday, kind of as a dry system. And it looks like with this one on Tuesday, this is where we start bringing in some cold air into the uh, central plains here. So there it comes southward, 528 and 534 thickness lines coming south. And then we see things really opening up here on Thursday and Friday. It's a very strong north northerly flow. And this will be supported in the upper levels. probably by a bit of a northwesterly flow. Let me run this forward. You see those systems coming through the western U.S. And then you see here we've got this northerly flow setting up on Friday, and that'll really push some of the Canadian, Canadian air southward. Almost uh, due northerly across the central plains there. So it should be kind of cold towards the end of next week. There goes a chunk of uh, cold air right there coming southward. 1046 millibar high. That's going to be a pretty cold system. And we do have some differences uh, between the models. Here's the ECMWF, and I'm going to show you a really interesting way to compare the models. The, the uh, European model is very, it's very hard to get the, uh, the data. In fact, uh, the ECMWF, they only give us the uh, surface pressure in the 500 millibar heights. But they also give us this 850 millibar temperature field and wind. And that's very interesting because that gives us a very powerful tool for tracking the progression of these air masses. So I, I went ahead and set this up for 216 hours for uh, the late part of next week. You can see here Friday, January 27th at 12Z, I set up an 850 millibar panel. And this is one way we can look at this cold air coming southward. So you can see the minus 5 line at 850 running from about north of Memphis out to south of Oklahoma City and all the way almost to Denver. So it looks like this is going to be kind of a shallow system. How does that compare with the GFS? Here's what the GFS has at 850. This is for the 28th at uh, 12Z, same time. And the minus 5 line runs about like this. Not quite as far west. Not quite as far southwest. So the uh, ECMWF had it a lot further west, and it also had a pretty strong core in this area, whereas the GFS has it more spread out towards the Hudson Bay area. 
So it looks like the ECMWF is going a little bit more severe. And here's the uh, Canadian forecast. Minus 5 line connecting almost all the way into the Great Basin area. So that's even a little more extensive, and it's got the cold pool again over the Great Lakes area. So this is also a little bit more severe than the GFS. So those are three models we can look at, and we can see that maybe we can trend towards more pessimistic with that uh, GFS output. Things may be a little bit colder than it's showing here. So you definitely want to get out the coats for next week. We should see a pattern change then, and uh, things should start cooling down. And you can see the southern stream starts uh, shutting down. Don't have these systems coming very rapidly west to east. In fact, we're going to have kind of a, a uh, sin. I can't believe that name is slipping. Uh, winds. California winds out of the uh, northwest, northeast, they're called the Santa, Ant, Santa Ana winds. So you can see a pretty good pressure differential across here. And that's a pretty significant change. Great basin high setting in and uh, very cold in the central U.S. Okay, I think that's about all I got here. And uh, just checking one more time on chat. Uh, Fred says they have 50 inches this winter at Bismarck. Snow cover. Yeah, that's quite a bit. It's been quite an active winter here. Okay, guys, I think that's about all I got here. I guess I'm done. I appreciate you watching, and I hope we will see you tomorrow at the usual time, 8 o'clock. Until then, uh, have a good evening.